Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. Good morning. My wife and I, misinformation, just went to Driftwood Beach on Jekyll Island. It's our last day, sadly enough. <laughs> I think this is it for vacations for the summer because we don't have the time or the money, sadly. We are going to try to get to Boca Chica, but I don't know. Uh, that may or may not work out. But anyway, I, I wanted to talk about some tweets from Elon Musk from yesterday and a couple of surrounding things. One uh, little little preview thing is actually Elon has been a little bit more clear about the 10% reduction in, in the workforce. Not 10%, 10% of basically salaried office staff. So I don't know exactly what percentage of the company that is, but if we said 50%, which is probably pretty generous, that would put it at somewhere on the order of um, 5%. And it's probably less than that, that is salaried staff and most is hourly. So people who are hourly staff are actually going to be increased. So basically the folks who manufacture the vehicles are going to be increased. And uh, Elon said that, you know, he's basically adjusting the hiring and the laying off of employees to be more efficient in the company, which 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 Tesla has done before, I believe, in 2017 and 19. They, they laid off a bunch of people of both of those instances. So anyway, I just wanted to touch base about that. The other thing, <clears throat> and this is a rumor, this is from uh, Holmar's catalog. I don't have another source you know, the person who tweeted him back and forth. But anyway, it appears that the the battery in the um, uh, the Model Y from Austin, Texas, may be on the order of 55 to 59 kilowatts. So that was real unique human confirmed that that was the case. So if that is in fact the case, uh, the car that I have, the Model Y right here, is about a 75 kilowatt hour battery. What it means is that the car is actually getting more range, probably because the range that we've heard about is like 279 miles or 275 miles, somewhere in that range and or I think something like that, maybe 280. But anyway, this one, when it rolled off the assembly line, was like 326. So anyway, it's getting a good range comparative to the Fremont Model Y long range. Again, this is all kind of rumors at this point. So I, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but I confirmed 55 to 59 kilowatt hours. Again, I've done a video on this before, but the basic idea would be to have the two Model Ys not compete with each other. That's kind of the goal of this thing. Okay, anyway, on to the main topic. Uh, Elon Musk was responding to some other people about different things about service and stuff, which actually sounds really great. They're looking at uh, two out of three cars receives, receive same day service, which is actually quite a laudable goal. Uh, Tesla has been dinged for having not great service in the past. I've had nothing but good experiences with them, very few experiences, but when I have, it's been really relatively easy. So that's that's been very, very good. So anyway, Elon in that thread then said, also beta full self-driving 10.12.2 is now expanding to uh, 100,000 cars. So that's more or less the entire fleet of cars that have full self-driving in the US and Canada at this point. I will tell you my friend, um, uh, Mars Embassy, <clears throat> whole Mars catalog, Mars Embassy, I have to keep that straight, early in the morning. Anyway, he said that he did finally get beta. He had had an accident and his car was totaled and he got a new Tesla Model Y and it, would, it had taken a really long time to get the beta put on on that. So he finally did get it. So it looks like 10.12.2 is coming to a lot of different people. But then the, inf the interesting information happened after that. He then went on to talk about 10.13. So it sounds like there will be a 10.13 before and version 11, which is the single stack to rule them all. Anyway, he said 10.13 smooths out intersection control, especially long lefts, and starts to handle roads with no map data at all. So <clears throat> what that means is if you have like just a, if you're going from a small road to a small road, the left hand turn is pretty, you know, pretty short. But if you have large multi lane car, uh, uh, intersections where the car has to go out and make a sweeping left around, that is often a problem. And, and the car can get kind of jerky and confused and not understand how to do that. I'm really curious how 10.12.2 is going to do back back in Athens because I just got it while we were down here. So I haven't had a chance to test it on a couple of left hand turns. I know there, but then and the really, really interesting part, and he continues on about this, is the last point, which is the thing about handling roads with no map data at all, is a big deal. Within a few months, full self-driving should be able to drive to a GPS point with zero map data. So this is not going to be 10.13, but it sounds like it's going to begin to go this way. What this means is <clears throat> that if we don't have 
some sort of pre-mapped information about a road or an area or something like that, that the Tesla vehicle will be able to go to that destination. And that includes, it sounds like, parking lots and, and things like that, because those are often areas that you've got a mapping to the street, but then the parking lot itself is just a big blob. And so the car would navigate to the general area, but then inside the parking lot, you sort of required to drive there. So, uh, so anyway, that is huge news, and I'm going to continue on with that in a second. But then, first of all, he then responded to himself underneath that. Well, actually, Valentine Fisher asked about when it was coming to Europe, and Elon said, we are close to the point where offering something for EU regulators to review makes sense. So what that means is that they have a data, some sort of data dump that they are going to be able to give the EU to basically prove that full self-driving is number one, safer than human beings, and number two, when it has to disengage during the beta phase, it's not you know, it's not a tragedy, <laughs> right? I, I've been doing this for a long time. It's basically like it starts to misbehave and you're like, okay, I take over. So, you know, so I think it'll be those two things, but this will be a lot of data to prove this. Now, you know, I'm hoping that maybe a little birdie out there or something will perhaps forward this information to the rest of us when, uh, not that I want anybody leaking information they're not allowed to, but it seems to happen. So if it does happen, it would be very interesting to see that data from uh, Tesla, you know, to, to see how they're proving that their their full self-driving is better than human beings um, using data to to figure that all out. All right. Then Elon continued <laughs> with some things. So Gasoff here asked at, uh, <clears throat> afterwards in the in the original tweet thread, not about the EU, but said, can we get more precise drop-off locations to hotels in Vegas? This is what I'm talking about. I give it the address and it's done routing on Las Vegas Boulevard, which is a big boulevard, in front of the hotel would be super beneficial to Tesla to watch rideshare drivers like me where real drop-off and pickup locations are. Let's map this. <clears throat> To which Elon responded, <clears throat> excuse me, early in the morning, like I said, yes, the car will navigate to a pin location, even if in a complex surface parking lot or hotel entrance. Surface parking lot being like where I am right now, just, just one level, not multiple levels. So it'll be able to navigate a complex surface parking lot. Then we, he continues, this has been a really interesting tweet thread. When in covered or underground parking lots, car will have to navigate using only inertial measurement, wheel movement, and vision as GPS signal is no longer available. So what does that mean? Of course, the GPS signal that we get is up there in the sky from satellites. If you've ever driven in a parking deck before or even gone through a tunnel or something, you know that the car just sort of, <laughs> it goes off the map. It's like, well, I have no idea where I am anymore. So what has to happen at that point is there's an inertial measurement unit, which basically every time you accelerate and decelerate, it figures out you know, how fast you're going, approximately where you're going. The wheel motion and the vision will tell it where it is. So as you go up, like a bunch of levels in a parking deck that will allow it to understand where it is and hopefully demarcate that location. And also if you wanted to go to the fourth level of the parking deck or something, it would take you right there and drop you off at that spot. And of course, you know, prior to like full robo taxis and stuff, it would be wonderful. In fact, I asked the question, haven't gotten an answer, but I said, would it be able to do summon? So if the car was on like the fourth level of the parking deck and you were down at the bottom level, would you be able to summon the car, have it back out of its spot, go down all the stuff down to where you are and pick you up. That would be super, super cool. Anyway, if I hear a response to that, I'll definitely let you know about that as well. All right. So anyway, so a bunch of things about that. And let's see, I think there's a couple more. Okay. And then Chuck Cook, who has done a bunch of stuff with his left turn from hell scenario <laughs> that is still not solved. If you haven't watched his video, you should definitely watch that. It, the, the full self-driving 10.12 fails at the uh, at the left turn thing. But Elon said that he believes that 10.13 will solve, and he doesn't say he believes, he says 10.13 will solve your left turn most of the time. So that's interesting. That means that they have been either running it in simulation or in real life, they've been going there with a, a, you know an alpha copy of 10.13 and testing it out. So that's really, really cool. And then, 
All right, so last point in this long tweet thread. Tim does FST beta says, does this mean handling median angling better so there's no lane blockage? So if you don't know, if you have a multiple lane left-hand turn, right? So you go across the first lanes and there's a median in the other, in between the two lanes, and then you have to continue. You can do that in two pieces, at least in the United States. You go up into the median and then continue on. And the problem is if you don't angle the car properly, it can block traffic and it can block traffic coming and going, but also block other people from following you. So the car basically needs to begin the turn as it gets into the median so that other people can fill in behind it if not better anyway to which elon replied not perfect but should be better so essentially it sounds like we're getting a lot of work on left-hand turns left-hand turns again if you live in a place where you drive on the right of the car just substitute right hand turns you'll understand what i mean but left hand turns in people who drive on the left it's very very complicated to do that because you're going across traffic if you don't have a protected type of turn signal you're having to get out into it and it could be four or five lanes of traffic with cars coming all over the place and there could be a median in the middle it's really really complicated so it's like about the most complicated thing to do for full self-driving and so it sounds like all of that's going to be great but but even more cool, because they've been working on that for a long time, is all of this stuff with no GPS data. It's going to be fantastic to be able to just drop a pin, and as long as there is a road, even if it's a dirt road, if it doesn't even know where it is, it'll still take you there, uh, particularly for parking lots and things like that, because most areas have been mapped at this point. But for parking lots, for parking decks, all of that kind of stuff, it's going to be really fantastic. <laughs> Sorry, my seat just went back. I've been talking too long. Uh, and then, of course, the other piece of this puzzle is the EU. It's going to be wonderful that this gets to the EU, hopefully very quickly. Hopefully they'll give them this data. The EU will look at it. <laughs> Politicians never go fast, but hopefully they'll go relatively fast and the EU will be able to begin testing it, at least in some limited form, in a relatively short span of time. So yeah, so that's the updates from Elon. It's been an exciting week. Who knew, you know, you go on a trip for a week and all of a sudden Elon Musk and, and every Everybody, you're talking about a whole bunch of things. I do want to talk about Andre Carpathy. He had a really interesting tweet thread about GPT and things like that. So I'll talk about that probably in a future one in the next day or two. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, thank you to my patrons on Patreon. I really do appreciate it. I it's just amazing to have your your you know support and conversations. And actually, I've been having problems keeping track of Elon Musk's tweets. They for some reason have been disappearing on Twitter. Hmm, I don't know. But some of my Patreon patrons and see some of the tweets that I don't, so they're able to forward them to me. So anyway, all this stuff is fantastic news. Can't wait to see what's next, and everybody have a lovely Sunday. Bye-bye.